What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? It's your boy Tall Sean. TS is who I am. You know I got my bro. Straight that is who I am. And today we have our first guest on the podcast ever, which is now our second guest. <laughs> we got Chris White. What's going on, bro? I'm good, fam. Chris White here, all the way from Houston, Texas. We got it rolling. Cuss University. We teach something. We learn something. We all win. No doubt. No doubt. Now, as you can see, um, if you follow either one of us, y'all see his posts and stuff that we make sure we try to share. And we all advocate of um, supporting each other. Um, Chris has a lot going on. He's one of those people that we even look to um, for inspiration and knowledge as well. Um, within what we do, man. So, like, before we get started, man, tell us any brief thing that you have going on, man, that you want the people to know oh, about. Man, so uh, something new that just came up. I have a new show that I'm working on that'll be coming out uh, probably in the next 35, 30 to 45 days. Mm -hmm. And it's dealing with a lot of um, things that I do every day. You know, a lot of people try to create content around things that they want to do as, as opposed to hearing that content around things that they do every day. Right. And I like bargain shopping every day. It's like a, it's like a scavenger hunt for me. So I got something real cool coming out. Dope. But y'all will be the first to know when when they jump off. I seen the clip, but I got my animator Oliver Banks that's hooking up the intro right now. We already shot some things, and we just putting some things into play. And I have a mentoring group uh, for young men and young women right now called Made for Success, and Made is an acronym for making a difference every day for success. And basically we want to try to empower, engage, educate, and enrich our youth. And sometimes it's easier working with the kids as opposed to the adults, no, yeah. because it's easy to work with them as, as opposed to trying to fix broken people. So mm -hmm. not saying that that's the case for everyone, but a lot of the times we're salty about a lot of things that did or did not happen within our lives. But kids, if you find them at the right sweet spot, there you have that level of optimism, like anything truly can possibly happen. Right. So we try to catch them right around that transition from eighth to ninth grade and okay. focus on getting them on track and keeping them on track. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. Dot, well, how you doing, bro? How's everything on your end? Everything is good, man, building. Um, you know this show will be on. <clears throat> I don't know when it's gonna air, so I can't really say what's going on now. It'll be done already by the time you see it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'm back in motion. Took a little break. I took a little life break. Back in motion. Got some good things coming. The new year, I think it's gonna be powerful, man. Looking forward yeah, to it. Definitely is. I, I'll save my shameless promotions for the end of the show, since I got a few shameless promotions, like we did live podcast. <laughs> hey, hey, ain't nothing shameless. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not, it, I it. have no shame in it. <laughs> hey, I, what I preach to the kids is we live by three principles, and it's called I do, and it's I D U, mm -hmm. and it's being intentional, being deliberate, and unapologetic. Damn right, it's I, like I do. That. Let's get it. I like that. Yo, we're gonna get right into the show, man. Um, hold on, let me do this because um, we'll be talking forever and. I don't have all day and I already miss a few minutes of the thing. I need to set our timer because last time Trey and I have been here almost two hours. Trey like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's loquacious. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Yo man, the first topic of the day, man, we're going to talk about um, creating a family business. And I put this on the um, on this because I've seen multiple dynamics in the creating the family business. And it's something that I'm currently doing with my two brothers. Um, we're, we're sitting down, um, looking at the different talents and skills that we all have. And we want to create something together. They know I am the businessman within our family. Um, um, the one that's been doing them, have had multiple businesses and multiple successful businesses. Both of my um, younger brothers are um, their businessmen as well. And, um, but they want to do something. We want to do something as a family, as a collective. So we've been working on that. But then I also see the dynamic. I, I have some people that have that I know where they have a family business and it's not so successful because the family structure isn't right. You know, what I mean, everybody isn't cohesive on the same page or <laughs> um, or, you know, they're doing something with their wife or husband. And then they're not on the same page when it comes to business and how to spend and how to deal with those dynamics. So I brought this to the table because I wanted to see have you guys ever had to have dealt with anything like that, you know, and, and how, how did you navigate that and how, 
and even in the and while we try to figure it out, I'm I'm gonna try to figure out how I'm gonna navigate this for my brothers as well. Because sad part is they're my brothers, so I know their strengths and weaknesses, and I don't wanna throw that on them because I know they issues. But you know, right? Go ahead, go ahead, Trey. Because I'm I'm a die. I don't I don't know. No, I don't I don't really have that situation. Where is it? I'm I'm on my own. I'm on my own, my brother. I'm gonna tell you just like it what it is. When I go to Cali, I'm gonna be on my own. It's what it is. That's my family right. when I hit that door. So I gotta start off another. I mean, Dub is my family as far as that therapy side. You know what I mean? You my family as far as music and entertainment side. That's where I'm at. I ain't capping. That's where it is. Done. So I'm done with that. All right. well, man. I play I play the game to win. So that's what it is. All right. But you know, it's funny. You play the game to win. Sometimes you have people that you want to incorporate into your team. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that team is more of I, I, I instead of we. Right. And, you know, uh, I being the oldest, uh, I'm the oldest. I have three brothers, three sisters. And so whether I wanted to or not, I was thrust into that leadership role. Me too. As a young patriarch or the family. And sometimes that don't bode too well as you get older because your siblings look at you and say, well, everybody gauges everything off of what Chris does or because he was successful at this or he wasn't successful. I'm either going to be or I'm not going to be instead of coming to it with their own first perspective and saying, well, OK, I see what Sean did. I yep. like it. I like it enough to follow in his footsteps or ask enough questions to get that desired result. But sometimes the family has splinters and broken pieces within it that hasn't healed over years and has never been brought up. So it's unresolved that keeps the family from cohesively working together as a unit. And so you have cognitive dissonance when you have family who separates from one another. It's like when the, the patriarch, the patriarch of the family passes away and that was the linchpin, the glue that held the country family, the city family, the other cousins all together. Cause you would meet at uh, the family reunions. Once that person passes away, Everything else seems to dissolve. Yep. So the business tends to work like that. Uh, quick example, I'm over uh, at this location here in Houston called the Turkey Leg Hut. And it's not a promotion of Turkey Leg Hut, but it's to say once you go to that location and see what these this, this husband and wife and family has done, they employ over 200 people. They have a location in the area that's trying to be that they're trying to heavily gentrify it. And take it from what's considered, it's like a black Wall Street over there. Mm -hmm. And it's all black owned business up and down the entire uh, six, seven blocks that's over there. And they don't really like that. But I talked to the father of the wife who owns the company. They do over $1.7 million a month. A month. Yeah, and they employ like, over no. 200 people. Hey, it's. I love it. I, I've been there a few times. I love it. Listen, it, it, it's an experience. And if you don't get motivated by that, something is really wrong with you. Some mm -hmm. people would get motivated. Some people would feel some tinge of envy or jealousy. But I'm like, look, they started off in a turkey leg food truck mm -hmm. and built that into what it is today. So don't tell me that the family can't do so. Here's a shining example. So I know in my own business endeavors, I've wanted and tried to incorporate brothers and sisters, but everybody doesn't have the same work ethic. Everybody doesn't have the same drive, the tenacity. So it's like, okay, what do you do in that respect? You try to delegate authority, but then it's like, you the big brothers, you telling people what to yeah, do. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. come on, man, listen, I, yeah. I'm a big picture person. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing y'all along so that we can grow together and we can fill in the details with what you're good at, what you're good at, and what you're good at. But if you can't handle this responsibility right here, when I come back, I shouldn't have to check on this. You should do it to a level where you're knowing that the job has been done thoroughly and properly. It's just being professional. Right. So then I started figuring out like, okay, this is why you've been terminated from this job. <laughs> this is why this isn't happening in your yep. mind on this because the work, the, the, the work that goes into it, you're not ready for it. And everybody's not meant to be a boss yeah. at all. Yeah, and it, that's it and that's what lot. I'm running into. That's what I'm running into with my brothers because that's the same thing. I'm the oldest, and um, they always call me the boss. They've been calling me the boss since day one, and 
And I and I tell them all the time, look, I'm not trying to be your boss. I said, but y'all be fucking up, man. And I gotta yeah. say something, yo. Like that that's the hard part. It's like stop you, fucking you're the up. Oldest, huh? <laughs> yep, you're the I'm oldest, oldest, right? Yep. So I'm imagine, mm -hmm. yeah, unless you had older cousins or uncles that were right. around the same age as you, mm -hmm. you really learn everything from your peers. Yep. I have or through exper it's experimentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like I wish. I had a brother, a big brother like me, because I'd be yeah. like, hey, man, oh my God. Let, let's go. What what you want yeah. me to do? Yeah. Oh my God. It'd be yes. it'd be amazing if I had another another person like myself. I mean, but but I'm telling my brothers, we we had a meeting, um, we had a meeting um Friday and we were sitting down because um just kind of going over details and we had the discussion and and I told him that. I said, look, bro, I'm not trying to be your boss. I said, I don't want to be your boss. We got to work on this together, but let everybody got to play their position, play their part, you know what I'm saying, and, and execute. The same thing you said. I literally just said that same thing. I said, look, I know I'm good at this. Yes, I could do all of those other pieces as well, but I know I'm good to great at this. I'm going to focus on my part. I'm not going to step on your to toes, and I'm not going to step on your toes. But I know... If we don't do what we're supposed to do, we're not going to make any money. And then we're just going to be throwing money. And I, and I kept it a buck. And so at the end of the day, I'm going to be the one that's going to be throwing the most money in. Right. So I'm not trying to really lose out here like that. You know what I mean? Like, so let's let's figure this out. Yeah. I'm not trying to lose. I'm putting the most chicken up, but I'm splitting everything a third with everybody. And I'm not doing this. I, <laughs> and, so, and sometimes you got to you got to really set that tone. You know, 50 Cent said something a while ago. I mean, when he first came out. And it was I know it wasn't directly from him. It was loosely based on something he had heard. And somebody said, uh, hire your enemies. Because mm -hmm. your yeah. enemies will work harder to prove to you that they're uh, wanting and needing to be in this position than your friends or your family. Because they're going to treat, the friends and family are going to treat it like, uh, fool, you owe me. <laughs> I'm supposed to be here because I'm your brother. Right. Um, your sister, I got a sister, man, she don't do jack. And I'm like, listen, you're the baby sister, but I'm telling you, you don't grind over here, you ain't gonna eat. <laughs> right. You don't eat, you ain't sleeping. Nope. And what's the point? And so now that creates internal issues because I've always been the big brother and I've always taken care of them. Right. So now it's like, uh, yeah, we, we're not playing that game no more. Yeah. We didn't reset, and now we're playing an adult game that has adult consequences because taxes don't play around. Not, when I'm it comes sure. to something broken or needing to be fixed or purchased, they're looking at you. Yeah. But when it's time to get paid, everybody's looking at yep. you. Yep. It's like that's that old uh, children's fable, you know, about the little chicken that wanted to bake some bread and <laughs> she had to go through the process. Who's going to help me? Not I said the dog, not I said yeah, the right. cat. Yep. But when it's time right. to eat, everybody's like, everybody at the table here's my plate, here's yep. my plate. And mm -hmm. it's like, nah, I'm good. So even in building what I have right now, I tried to incorporate my family. And I said, listen, it's going to take dedication. It's going to take money at the end of the day. So not to, it's, a, it's seven of us. If we all came to the table with about, let's just say, $2,000, that's only $14,000. But if we could come to the table with about $10,000 a piece, guess what? We could go buy this straight out. Yeah. Yep. You know what? I'm, I'm like, everybody That's wants it. to have the family functions over here, but I'm the only one that paid for this. <laughs> I know, everybody wants it. to come and do the photo shoots, but I'm the only one that okay. bought all this equipment. Yo, Everybody went, hey, Chris Chris does so hey, can you make us t-shirts? Can you oh. make us hoodies? Can you can you can That's you funny. can you can you? I just did what? I just did a bunch of hoodies and t-shirts the other day for my family, <laughs> artwork for my mom's church. I said, Mom, y'all gonna pay me for this. Yeah, stuff. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yo, so, but I think I, and I want to transition into this, and I think even with the family work dynamic and everything. I think we'll understand they, if they understand if we understand as a people, because we all black men, the that our dollar matter. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of times we don't realize in the black dollar how powerful that is within business. Because you see how other groups um can get anything done at the drop of a dime. Because we having this big old conversation about Kyrie Ka and and, Ka yeah. and Kanye, about Jewish yeah. people. And okay, cool. You know, I, 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 we've had this discussion. I don't think what um, Kyrie did was also bad. Kanye might have jumped out the window totally. 
but I'll say this, the tr it's true, um, it's true, you know, points that they were, that was being made when it comes to how they use their money and how they help uplift their own yep. more than what we do. Trey and I talked about Donald Sterling, how he said, what the Jewish people do, we give them, we give you, we give you a fishing pole. You know what I mean? You come in, you you need to, you want to start a business, you want to start some or start something up. We give, we loan you. You don't have to go to the bank. We loan you the money, and per, and help you start your own thing. You know what I mean? We talked about how our personal rich blacks don't really do that, and no. our own internal structures ourselves. We don't. A lot of us don't do that. It's only a few of us that really do that. Each one teach one. You know. You know. I'm my brother's keeper thing. Right. The sooner we understand that our money is powerful, the the bigger and better we will be as a people once we do that. But we just ready, we just want to buy fly shit all the time. All the time. Yeah. I, just, I don't, I don't, I don't understand how we don't see that though. I mean, if you look at the success of these white people, it's on our backs. Mm -hmm. Some, something as simple as looking oh. at your feet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying they wasn't buying siblings. No, none. They wasn't. They wasn't wearing Tommy Hilfiger back in the days either. We put them. And you know, Timberland so was going out of business. Yeah, was going out of business. We yeah. put all this stuff on the map to look mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I like Polo. Polo Ralph I like because it fits me good. But realistically, <laughs> without black people, Polo Ralph the Red ain't wearing that either. No. None of these companies. You know bro. what I'm saying? So I don't know how we don't see it. We we always have our blinders on when it's something of value. You know what I'm saying? And when you speak on something of value, we want the instant gratification. Yep. yep. So all of us got to be reprogrammed. And y'all talking about being, you know, older brothers. Like, I'm the youngest. So I'm going to have two older brothers that ain't trying to listen to me anyway. So that's a dynamic to where I'm going to have to prove something and elevate something to a fact of where it's so obvious right? just to get them to walk on. But if I get it to a level of where it's so obvious, how far back am I going to really pull somebody up? You watch me do all of this. You Good watch point. me take every step. You know what I'm saying? You watch uh -huh. me relocate myself. Matter of fact, you watch me fall off several times and restructure my entire dynamic as an individual. You watched all of that. Now you're going to watch me start and regroup again and again and branch off. Now you want to come present yourself. I mean, yeah. what am I supposed to do? That, yeah. That's a that's a great yeah. dynamic. That's a great point you made, dog. Damn good point. <laughs> <laughs> where, where we at right now? But but through a therapy aspect, you carry me. Through an entertainment aspect, he pushed me. Where am I going? Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Where am I going? So there's a dynamic that's a long separation between family and relative. You know what I'm saying? Cool. I love, I cherish, I build with my family. I right. love my relatives. But yeah. I can't always cherish and build with them. So I'm saying it's different levels and dynamics to that love. Yeah, facts. No, that's true. That, that, okay. to, to, to piggyback off of what you were saying, Trey, I don't know why we don't understand the intrinsic and extrinsic value of what we bring to the table. Every year, these companies, even the the uh, the United States, forecast their revenue based on the spending of African-American culture. Yep. $1.8 trillion every year is this pie. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants a slice of this pie, our liquid money. As mm -hmm. soon as we get it, it's in and out our hands. Oh yeah, we gone. It doesn't circulate. No, doesn't. And so when I heard Kanye, it's like listening to Kevin Samuels. You might not like my tone. You might not like what I said, but tell me what I said ain't true. True. So I'm listening to Kanye and I started thinking, I said, you know what? I am jealous. The fact that they don't abort their babies. They build their community around themselves. I am jealous at the fact that they do commerce with one another to the point where you're the outsider and we're going to gladly take your dollar. Because if you, you look at what's happening in every community, I'm going to say the Asian community because it's Korean and Vietnamese and Chinese. Right. They come oh. in and they have these beauty stores. Mm -hmm. They can create a product specifically for the urban culture set mm -hmm. up in the urban environment, mm -hmm. extract urban dollars and mm -hmm. go to wherever it is they live, which is not anyone that looks like us, no. and build their community. Yeah. But if we even sat back and said, I want to open my own beauty store, 
and I want to cater to the the Asian community and set up in the Asian community, that store would be first, you wouldn't even get licensed. No. Nope. Second, you wouldn't even get past 30 to 45 days before it was closed down because yeah. no one would support it. And no I'm one telling you, there. you mm -hmm. know, I, I said this because, and I'm saying this because yeah, I did it personally. I, I was in the CBD and hemp business for about uh, five years mm -hmm. and I had a product <clears throat> that wasn't even on the market. And I went to a store, it happened to be owned by uh, a gentleman, he was Korean. And he just flat out told me that he would not do business with me, not because of, uh, my company and the product, he knew he could make a lot of money out of it. He just said, well, we only buy within our community. And I said, wait a minute, even if you were to get this, I can still, because I manufacture, I control my price. Mm -hmm. I could give you this for 25 cents on a dollar. Still wouldn't do business. You mm -hmm. might even go to your own personal relationship and they'll say, I'll give it to you for 60 cents on a dollar. You still going to do business with them. Do you yep. see how exclusive that that no, group, I'll, that I'll, economic structure is. Yeah, I wish we took that much pride in what we do. I'll put it like this: It's one of my big, one of my biggest clients is a is an Asian man, and um, and I, I do I do all his webs. He has a plethora of um nail salons, and I did his corporate website, and then I do individual websites for each one of his salons, and I do all the photography for him. Like he flies me to Tennessee. Texas, different places to take photos of his locations all throughout North Carolina. He sat me down and told me, he said straight up, he was straight up honest with me, you know, in his broken English. He said, uh, LaShawn, I work with you because all the, all the blacks I see, you're the most reliable. We normally don't work with your people. And when I send you to my locations, you go in there professional this he gave a list of things he said i normally don't see that from blacks this is why my people only really work with our people and wow. i was sitting there like and i wasn't offended because i can i can see it i can understand it based on what you see on tv what what is depict to you that how we are and i informed them i said well i i said i appreciate you working with me and I appreciate you pay my price because I I, I kind of up it on his ass and he pays it. You know what I mean? Sure. I said, but I said, all of I said, all of my people aren't what you guys depict would depict. I said, now, yes, we have some flaws, but if you base things on American view, we're gonna look the worst based on American view if you see us on TV and you go by what police think. You know what I mean? I said, um take it back in. Piggyback uh -huh. what you said real quick, not to cut you off. Uh -huh. You said you weren't easily offended. Yeah, right. Right. Not even mm -hmm. realizing what you said. That's our problem. Yeah, we easily offended. By being offended, we don't learn. So yeah. what basically what he's telling you is the the elevation of our businesses is based on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And everything starts from within. And we start right there, yeah. coming on time. Mm -hmm. Consistently coming on time. Reaching deadlines, maybe sometimes even before the deadline. Uh, always. If you're quality, early on time. Making sure the quality is on point. Always. Then we can kill a lot of these issues. We can kill a lot of these issues if we just listen instead of being so emotional. Because as soon as somebody says something, we want to argue, or we want to run oh. on social media and have a rant. Yeah. Oh. We're not processing nothing that's being presented At to all. us. Yep. All right, go ahead. I just said, go ahead. No, no. No, no. no. Good way no. to chime in. That was a great way to break it. Hey, you, you, nah, just you, said... had, you can't put the ingredients in the kitchen. Don't let me cook, man. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but, but we you, don't. Yo, but you're right, though. Me and TS talk about it loosely all the time. Every yeah. time something happens, we react. We, we, yeah. we reactionary. They, people. Always, they always hate. They don't want to work with us. They always move. Yeah, but we're late. We give poor yeah. quality. We don't reach yeah. the deadlines. We answer yeah. the phones with attitudes. We don't answer calls. Service. A lot of our we customer service is hard. Mm -hmm. All of that. We act like we're doing you a favor. Mm -hmm. yeah. We act like we're doing you a favor. I've seen so many. Now, this is not segueing, but I'm a therapist. We can segue. I'm I, 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 okay, I'm a therapist. <laughs> I'm a creative. And mm -hmm. creative has a wide range of applications. Right. So people tend to say, hey, man, I thought you only did this. Mm -hmm. And so you do this also, mm -hmm. but they're not giving credence to the fact that I'm multifaceted and I can do a number of things. 
Right. But that's a testament <laughs> to being on, like Trey said, being on time, being consistent, having an incredible work ethic, having quality services or products. Right. I don't listen. I'm not the cheapest. I'm the most valuable when it comes to creating a quality product or service because mm -hmm. I'm going to take my time and ensure that it's done right. You're gonna you paying me if you're an individual. You come and see me as a therapist. You're paying me two hundred dollars an hour, two hundred dollars for forty five minutes worth of work. That's how much forty five minutes is worth to me right now at this time. Right. Two thousand twenty three is not the same price as two thousand twenty two. So yeah, things that's, are real. that's real. That's <laughs> real. But now different application. You put me in a setting where I'm coming to DP your movie. Mm -hmm. I'm the director of photography for your project. My it's not two hundred dollars. You're paying for my experience and my service to come and provide you with quality service as your DP. Right. If I'm coming in and do lighting, lighting might actually cost you fifteen hundred dollars oh, a no. day. It's easy. Yeah, that's Pro yeah. yeah. So I understand what you're saying when you say I charge you more, but think about it. If we value what we brought to the table seriously and not do the I, I I've I've had to cut so many people <laughs> off when they say, Hey man, I'm your boy. What I want to do a photo this. shoot, my photo shoot might be fifteen hundred dollars. Uh-huh. But if you're my boy, you gonna come say, Hey man, can you let me slide you two hundred? Right. Right. And give you oh. the same quality of shoot that I just did. Yeah. <laughs> And you go tell somebody, mm -hmm. man, that's my boy. I only shot him 200. Guess what that just did? That just devalued my product or the quality of my service because you have just, uh, what's the word? De basically defamed it by lowering the value right. of yeah. it. A white man taught me that. A white guy taught me that. Um, I say about shit. I say about seven years ago. Seven years ago. I um I rented uh office space from across across the street from my house. I rented some office space. Um he got me into uh, commercial um real estate photography. He got me into that because I was flying drones just as for fun. He was like, dude, you need to be come over here and take these drone photos on my on my location. He started putting me on game. He'll he um he a real estate agent. He loved my work ethic because I, I came out I, I bought a a, a two bed a two office space big front space one because I just started podcasting. So about nine years ago, I just started podcasting at the time. So I had one room for podcast and one room for photography. Um, and then the front room was me and my team where we were doing a bunch of other different things. And <clears throat> he was in there one day and I was talking to someone and because he would come in and I would do contract work with him. I'll go and do drone work, photography work. And he was in there one day while I was speaking to a client and it was a black client. And then he was, then he heard me speak to another client. Um, and, and I was in the other room. I didn't know he was listening, listening like that. <clears throat> so he kept it a buck. He said, um, LaShawn, I said, yeah, man. He said, um, you have great, great work. He's the one that put me on to the Asian guy. I've been with this Asian guy. I've been working for this Asian guy for six years now. He, every time, we, every time he calls me, like clockwork, top of the year, January, I think it was January 15th. Every year he calls me for work. <laughs> you know what I mean? So <clears throat> he put me, he said, LaShawn, um, you have great work. Work. He gave me all that list of stuff. Your, your quality of work is phenomenal. Um, respect your business. He didn't get into what he heard me say. He said, respect your business. He said, um, everybody, if anybody has an issue with what you charge, they don't need to be working with you. And there's a bunch of other people they can go work with. He was like, respect your business. And I knew what he was talking about because I always gave black people a smaller rate because I know, I, I'm trying not to say this word, niggas be niggering when you talk to them. Yo, they always talk about some, yo, come on, work with me, man. Work with, you me, work with me, man. Yo, always work with me, man. Oh, that's too high. And I'm thinking to myself, I, I get this rate all the time. This is my rate. But I would, I would dumb it down for my brothers and sisters. And then, but then they still want that same high quality that I was giving, like you said earlier, bruh. Everyone else, yeah, <laughs> bruh. So, <laughs> you won't have my price. You want me to do it for half the price? I'm gonna do half the work. How about that? But <laughs> yep. then I can't even allow myself to do. I half can't the do work it. Me neither. Because <laughs> I'm so trained and it's ingrained in me to always do quality service. And so mm -hmm. I tell them, I say, listen, the price is five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. What I'm gonna do is this one time. I'm gonna do this pro bono. 
I'm going to do it because I'm not going to shirk on the price. Right. What I'll do is I do it of my own volition of my free will, because when you go and tell someone that you did this with me, they're going to say, hey, man, how much you charge? Hey, I, the price is still $5,000. Yeah. It's just I did it because I wanted to help. Now yeah. you you owe me. Yep. <laughs> you owe me that that value of what I just provided for you. And some people I, they don't understand you know, it, man. I, my I, business I, I, changed. My business yeah. changed after that. Like I'm when he said that, man. I'm I think my price. My when I started turning down clients, that's when I got more clients. You know what I'm saying? So like business went oh, up, man. everybody, because, and he even told me, he said, the demographic I work with, they look at your pricing. If it's too low and they know what it is, they don't see that as quality. At all. You know what I'm saying? At all. When it's priced, because I always try to keep my prices not too high, damn sure not too low. And I'm like right above the standard m middle ground, you know what I mean? Based on, just based on what I want to, because sometimes I just, I could be overwhelmed and I don't want to take any clients. You know what I mean? I'm a one man yeah. band as well. <laughs> so you, you'll probably give somebody an asshole price just because yep. you don't want to do it. And yep. by chance they happen to say, okay. And they take it. They do, like, it every time, yo. <laughs> on, they do it every like, time. <laughs> I, I, wait, I ain't trying to cut you out, Trey, but just real quick story. I, I, I had a friend. He saw that I was doing a lot in videography, right? And I was doing some shows with A&E and I was doing some document and I was working with a uh, not Disney, a Disney affiliate, uh, Channel 13 News out here, right? Mm -hmm. But I had gained so much knowledge of how to be a producer. I, I started off from being a, a grip, mm -hmm. to go from a grip to where now I can know I can come in and I can DP your project, I can shoot your project, I can edit your product. But basically the person that taught me is, they taught me how to edit. And when they taught me how to edit, they said, now editing is gonna lead to you being a better shooter. Now you're going to shoot with the editing in mind. And I said, oh, wait a minute. Never thought about it like that. So this partner of mine, he said, hey, yo, Chris, I got the same equipment you got. I got the same everything you got. I'm going to do my videos for $1,500, for $150. And I said, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're going to do a music video for $150? I said, bro, you'll be broke and you'll be out of business within 30 days. I said, because every if you can do the same quality of service that I can for $150, you will stay at that price forever because no one's going to see the intrinsic value of what you do when you try to charge them $1,500. At the time, I was charging, I think, $7,500 for a music video. And this is when I got out the whole music video arena is because... This guy came and he wanted to do a commercial with me. He said, hey, listen, I want to do a commercial. I want it only for 30 seconds. I already have the location. I already have this. But I only have a budget of $10,000. Wait a minute. I was doing a, a four-minute music video mm -hmm. for, for $7,500. You're telling me you got $10,000 for me to do a 30-second commercial? And if I, no matter what I did, if I shot it right and I went back to it, I'm editing, I'm shooting to right. edit. I'm gonna put this 30 second commercial, even if you have to come <laughs> in and do retakes or right. change the edit, I'm only investing a minute amount of time for yeah. more money. Yeah. And I said, every time my price went up and someone paid that price, that became, became the new the base. Price. Yep, the new base. Yep, that always became, the, I look like we lost Trey, so he'll be back Where you in. go, jumping. Trey? <laughs> He'll be back in in a minute. I'm pretty sure. Oh, he said his shit, bro. All right. He getting it together now. <laughs> All right. But, but we'll that, keep that, moving. We'll keep moving. Yeah. But that's that's the same thing here, man. I think um what I did, that's every time, like you said, charge the asshole price, is is people <laughs> end up taking it and then now that's a new benchmark. Exactly. Like, what the hell? That's a new benchmark in, in the pricing. And, and, and I didn't how want to do go. business with you. Yup, didn't want to do it. I really didn't want to do it. <laughs> and I said, man, okay, five thousand. Next thing you know. Yep. All right, when can we start? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. On, and and they break and they're breaking you off quickly. You, <laughs> quickly. Trey is back. You're back to go. There he is. <laughs> oh, he had to get a nap in real quick. But <laughs> well, yo, let's let's transition, man. There's a lot going on. I we we normally don't talk politics, um, but I wanted to bring this up um because it's three of us and um so a quick little small politics session because I think the black dollar kind of goes in that. You know, once we figure out our power within our dollar. 
will realize that, um, you know what I'm saying, this part here, even the political side of things, we can um we can we can actually have we can actually have laws and things that will fit our our base what we are you know i'm i'm no i'm neither no one has to say the political breakdown neither democrat nor republican i i really as i got older i vote based on my um what fits me you know what i'm saying that's how i vote if it's a republican and you talking you doing something and you what your what you have going on fits what I'm looking for, I vote based on that. You know what I'm saying? I right now, that. we see Agent Orange is running again. He said he's going to be back out there. Um, he's, what are he's your thoughts? He's trying to duck them charges. Yeah, he's trying, he's trying to duck them charges. trying to get back charges. in power so he could put a squash kibosh on that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are your thoughts on that, Trey? What do you think about Agent Orange being back in the, in the game? I mean, me and my father got into it yesterday talking about it. Um, I think what Donald Trump did was expose some of the bullshit that goes on in politics. It's easy for us to just call him a racist and blame him for everything going on in America, but all he did was expose the bullshit that's been in place forever. Yeah. And the fact that he even won the election shows how the bullshit is. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of black people just vote Democrat because they feel like that's the right thing to do. It's like going to church on Sunday. They why? Just go. Why, why do you think that is, Trey? We program the condition. We don't think for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We just do shit. We just do shit. Kids, you know what I'm saying? What, what you just there's said, no, you, in the there's church. No you grew word. up in the church. You grew up in the church. So you would see these politicians come to your church only around time for voting yep. to say, get behind us. We're going to do this for you. We're like, man, hold up, man, hold up. You haven't been doing anything the entire last two years. Mm -hmm. But you're over here pandering to us to get this vote. How valuable is my vote? And then we're if you think about it, yo, mirrors, back in the day, blacks voted Republican, you know, and Democrats yeah. were the 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 what Republicans are today. And then it flipped, you know what I mean? Once they got our vote and everything flipped, now we now it's the same thing. I We got to start voting based on our interests, man. And we got to start making these motherfucking people, these politicians, realize that we have power. But we can't do that until we stop killing ourselves in Chicago, rappers going to Houston, shooting them, getting shot and shit over a fucking dice game. Atlanta, which was right now supposed to be the black, one of the black okay. meccas of our era, of, of our era. Right. They, they more intrinsic in, in fucking violence. It is ridiculous out there. And then Herschel Walker, like, Oh, oh, again, I'm not, I don't oh, understand that shit. Like when he talked, y'all, <laughs> it, it should not be as close as it, it as it was. We have to in, be educated. In Georgia. We have to be educated. <clears throat> that's that's the whole thing. We're miseducated, we're misinformed, and we take a stand over so many things that have no value. Soon as Kanye said what he said, social media went crazy. Everybody spent two days talking about it. Soon as that went down with Kyrie, everybody took a whole week talking about that. Wakanda Forever comes out, we take a whole week to fight over that. You know what I'm saying? We're not even paying attention to our local yep. politicians that affect what our children are doing in school. Exactly. It, none of that stuff. Go, go we in, don't pay go attention in. to the school system that isn't educating our children. We don't focus on none of that. Bro. And then as soon as our kids go to college, we send them to the whitest university in America and wonder why they go there and they're confused. Bear. You know what I'm saying? We don't value what matters. And I'm not going to blame it on social media because we don't have to partake in none of that garbage. So I'm not that guy. That's not what I'm saying. There's some educational stuff that's there too. But we're miseducated and misinformed. Like you said, with Herschel Walker, how the hell is he even, how the hell could he even run? Uh, man, let, let, let alone win something. This, this, is, this is what I learned uh, when Obama was in office. When he did his first run, it was based on hope. The second run was based on uh, continuing that first agenda. Now, everybody can say what they want about Obama, what he didn't do for us, what he, you know, did or tried or attempted to do. I looked at it like this. I said, they killed Martin Luther King. They killed Malcolm X. If you got a first time black president going in office and he's trying to set everything up for a black agenda, he's dead too. Now, yeah. what I did notice with all these groups that came into power, like the Hispanic community, like the LGBT community, they didn't come to him. They didn't come to that administration with, this is our vote. Mm -mm. They came to him with a vote and a check and a for check. forty-five million dollars. There we go, money a check talk for thirty million dollars. Yep. Now you see these packs 
that mm-hmm. these politicians have. You see these uh, what what do you call them guys, uh, Sean? That uh, the lobbyists, Lobby. the lobbyists. Yep. Mm-hmm. They're there for a reason. I yes. wanted to be a lobbyist because I said, wait a minute, I get to go do whatever I want and give people money to influence yeah. them to do what I need them to do. Yeah. Hey, I don't know if y'all ever watched the show House of Cards. Yeah. House of Cards. If you watch that show, you said this is the most gangster shit ever. Yeah. It's like gangsters the ain't the dudes holding guns yeah. on the street. Nah, That's some the, people with in suits, man. Behind the, 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 the a behind dudes a with desk. a pen, yeah. with an ink pen, yeah. is way more gangster than any cat with a gun. Yeah. I done seen a judge sign off. Listen, my brother, one of my brothers is a sheriff. Mm-hmm. He said he works as a bailiff in the courts. He said, man, they ain't giving these boys numbers no more. I said, what do you mean? He said, he give, they giving them alphabets. Mm-hmm. And I said, explain that to me like I'm a five-year-old. He said, man, they gave this boy a hundred, life mm-hmm. plus 175 years. And he stood there still. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. He said, as soon as he left that courtroom and they go in that back room where the, where the officers take him. Crying. He said, this dude broke down. <laughs> it was yeah. crying. Hey, look, I can't do life in 145 years. And the guy was like, hey, man, do as much as you can. And yeah. I said, okay. Now, that's a part of the same system mm-hmm. that your elected officials are there because someone voted for them. Someone contributed to their campaign. You don't know these judges on a personal level. You don't know these politicians on a personal level. But Trey made a valuable point. He said your local politicians have more of, uh, they have more of an effect on what your day to day is than you would ever. Look, my house, my uh, my H, not my my HOAs, my uh, taxes mm-hmm. just went up. Mm-hmm. My valuation of my property and my market value just went up mm-hmm. exponentially. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying, hold up, man. I bought my house when I bought it for $75,000. Mm. Now you're telling me my market valuation of my house is $320,000. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this this is not a 300 and what I would see a $320,000 crib. I understand. It's nice. Three car, th- two bedroom, three bedroom, two car garage, two yeah. bathroom. Standard. Right. Now, the valuation because of the people we elected yeah, that said yeah. we want these bonds, these referendums, these yeah. things to fix the city. That's where it comes out. If you're not coming to them with a check and contribution, that cat Charleston White. Oh yeah. You know what he said? This is what he said the other day. He said, "You don't realize how valuable you are till you make a contribution to the sheriff's department. Make a thousand dollar contribution to the sheriff's department. They're gonna pay attention to you." And they're gonna say, oh, wait, wait, hey, Mr. Mr. White, hey, we saw that you donated to uh our campaign. Now you have their attention. Make another donation. Now you come to do speaking engagements. You a pillar of the community. They're gonna respond to you faster than they're gonna respond to Trey. Because but how do people, they're how do people, how do people <laughs> but how do people get this information though? Just the whole thing. We're misinformed, they're miseducated. Oh, That's the whole thing. True. The, the, the problem, no, it, the problem is this: the information is out there. And it's there because I know that. I know what you're talking about. The information is there. But the problem is we don't look at it. We don't look at it. It's there. It's in our face. But we skip that because we want to hear the Kardashian um, uh, wear a Halloween outfit to old girl's birthday party. You know what I'm saying? Let's start. But let's start one home at a time. How many parents talk to these impressionable children piece by piece? You know what I'm saying? You don't overwhelm them. Right. But piece by piece, it's still a, it's still an issue. Right, remains an issue. You you know, ain't nobody talking to no damn kids. Hey, hey I talk to my kids, man. <laughs> I talk to mine too. I'm trying to talk, but we talking about we grew up in the air where ain't nobody talked to us. Oh no, no, no. Hey, hey, we we, we can, do better because we want it because we want to and we saying, know better. You know, I talk can, to my boys, and my daughter. Can, I I get them knowledge every chance I get. We can't we can't stop beating these people in the head with that. When they start talking all that foolishness, we right. then start letting them know. We got to start one home at a time. Right. Are, right. are you keeping your house in order? And all them people talking that bullshit going to stop talking to you. <laughs> right. That's a fact. Because <laughs> yeah, their, home, their home is all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Their home is wherever they lay their feet. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> That's how we kill the game. Wait, 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 wait. Did you just describe the homosexual? Yep. That's yep. what it is. That's what it is. Yeah, couch like, pirates. The, the couch the pirates. Way to, the way to kill this game, the way to kill this game, period, is just like an investment. Because what it is, is an investment. One house at a time. We the only race of people that have a problem with that. These other races ain't they ain't worried about that. They taking care of theirs. They would take care of theirs just to keep us from getting a piece of it. Oh, what, hey. that's just how it is. Go ahead. And they will you they will use us to help them proceed if we yeah. have something that works. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. Because you got you got people that <laughs> yo you got people that go to work at a job and be like, I ain't working for no white man no more. <laughs> but they won't take the time to start a business. And if they work for you, they're going to try to hustle you instead of putting the work in. So what you going to do? Yeah. No, so what you going to do? You going to uh -huh. commit a crime or you going to do something illegal, then you go right. to prison. Who you working for now? Still working for the white man. They're telling exactly. you when to wake up, when to go to sleep, when to wash your ass, when oh, to take bro. a shit. And when you wash your ass, you got to look at a bunch of other butt naked <laughs> niggas while you're doing it. So that's the rest of your life right now. Yeah. Because you got no discipline. You spoke on motivation earlier, but without discipline, that motivation ain't shit. Because that motivation all. gonna die. I gotta yeah. be disciplined to go to the gym. Because I ain't motivated to lift that heavy ass shit, man. <laughs> that motherfucker heavy, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you get married, you can't be motivated to stay married. You gotta oh. be disciplined. Because yeah. I don't care, how beautiful, I don't care how beautiful your lady is. I don't care how gorgeous she is. Hey, once in a while, you look at her like, man, that motherfucker there. Get up, hey. my, get up my goddamn man. <laughs> <laughs> And hurt you, and hurt you, hurt you also, or hurt oh. me. I know, I know, hey, I can boy. be something. I can be, hey, some, I can be you, something. One you got me hot. You got me hot with that that one, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you got. Hey, I had to sit. Hey, the reason I was late to the call this morning because, uh, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> the house is one of the biggest investments you're gonna ever make. So when oh, something yeah, go yeah. down, yeah. you in charge of it, right? Oh yeah. The, the the house started backing up the the water. Something in the pipeline backed up and it started. So dog, it's thirty degrees down here. It was raining. I'm outside with my son, my neighbor, his wife, and my son out trying to get this snake in this pipe. Uh -huh. I come back. I come back in the house, and we see that the pipe is clogged up with tissue and hair. So I tell my tell my wife, and I knew exactly. <laughs> Every box that was going to be checked off along the way when I said this. And uh -huh. I said, boom, boom, boom. I said, they just discovered that it's a bunch of tissue and a bunch of hair in the pipeline, which means that y'all are, my wife has a, long, a lot of hair. Uh -huh. I said, which means that it's going into the drain. Y'all just flushing it. It's going into the drain. It's doing this. It's right. creating this little monster inside the pipe system. All of a sudden, I said, I know she's going to create deflection. Yep. She's going to become argumentative. All over, all right. And then she's not listening to process what I'm saying. She's looking to defend her position on why she could flush and put all this shit in the pipeline without listening to what I'm saying. And I'm like, I, girl, I just spent an hour outside <laughs> in the freezing rain. Shut up and listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. That that took it here. And I said, Wusa. Yep. Yep. Chris, calm down so you don't escalate the situation. So her tone changed the dynamics of the conversation, which changed my response to her <laughs> response in the car. And I'm like, you know what, man? You know, I'm glad I own my own building and I own the studio where I can have salvation and come over here and just, hey, if I ain't talking to y'all brothers, I would be like, hey, I'm, I'm going to do a rant this morning. <laughs> Yo, I swear you. to you, bro. I swear to you, Trey. Then we just had this conversation the other day. But we probably did it offline because my wife did the same Ooh. shit, bro. As soon as as soon as her voice tone went up, I said, Sean, <laughs> bring it. You gotta calm yourself. You got this ain't gonna go nowhere, nowhere right. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> All we're gonna do is argue for no reason. And women, bro, especially as your woman, they yeah. know how to press that button. They know that button. They go, Ooh. boo. Yeah. Boo. And then they, they hold that motherfucker, yeah. they just hold it. <laughs> What you go to? What, what, what now? What now? What now? And as a therapist, I'm sitting there like, I know what I'm supposed to do because uh -huh. I coach this, and I'm yeah. like, okay, okay, we go, okay, we gonna do this today. All right, yeah. let's get it. <laughs> yep. and, yeah. and I know that sets the tone for the rest of the week. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the rest of the day. Not the rest of the, the day. Rest the rest of the week. week. Hey, dog, I've been married. How long you been married, Sean? It'll be 10 years in March. Oh, man. bro. I'm 20. I'm See? 20. Yeah, I don't 20. like I don't like these, I don't like you one of y'all most. <laughs> <laughs> she hey, been white been together for, fi- for almost 15 years, but yeah. Word. Been married yeah. for the, that 10. I, I, did, I, did I don't, like, I don't like y'all kind. <laughs> I did a photo shoot for my boy's wedding, right? Uh, this was about six years ago. He just calls me out of the blue one day. He said, hey, man, what's up, Chris? I said, what's up, dog? He said, man, why did you let me get married? And I said, <laughs> I said, you, you want the professional answer or you want my answer? He said, I want your answer, dog. Tell me the real shit. I said, well, dog, you deserve to be just as miserable as the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> So Trey, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming with a whole bunch of beautiful rapping and packing. Yup, yup. No, hey. I don't. I don't. I don't plan on being that old single guy. I look forward to it. The good and the bad. Well, oh, hey, it, I, it, I'm, glad we, I'm glad we. I'm glad we're starting in this. I, I want to nah, transition I'm, to this. I look. I look. I look forward to it. I look forward. To I want to transition to this. I'm glad we right. started that. That's 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 a hey, good. This is a real good conversation. conversation. Yeah, this is damn <laughs> sure a real this, conversation. This a, Trey, Trey ain't married. Oh, damn. Did I do that? No, nah, Oh, me. you did it. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's me. Trey ain't married yet. You're, uh-huh. you're going to say it right there, right? Yep. Oh, no. It's <laughs> <All right>. cool. <laughs> so, as it comes, you're going to say, man, I was talking to Chris about it. Yeah, that same thing Sean said. What the? Come on. T.S. and Chris saying the same thing? Hey, bro. Well, yeah. the, the, dif- the difference is, at, at this level of maturity, looking forward to getting into that, I'm prepared for the things that will come. That doesn't mean it's not going to hurt as bad. But you know, I'm still prepared for like a lot Plus more than I was. I was like, always oh, hold on, I mean, I didn't mean to start it. Plus, you've been there before already, so you already know. Oh, you've been married before, yeah. Trey? Yeah, 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 I got yeah, married man. when I was. I got married at 25. Man. This ain't this ain't his first rodeo. In this okay, game. Start, okay. This ain't his first rodeo. I didn't know it. Okay, I didn't. Know, I needed that content. Okay. <laughs> All right, let, I'm gonna play this man because I want to. I want us to hear the stark contrast in both of these conversations when it comes to just being married. Uh, gotcha. these, are, these are from some brothers. Technically, women always married up. Wouldn't that mean that men Y'all hear it? Down? Absolutely. So men in that case would be settling, right? A lot of men settle. A lot of men settle. A lot of men settle. Yeah. For sure. yeah. yeah. But see, there's a real conversation in that that you ain't ready for. White women marry up. Okay? Oh. And most of our sisters marry down, but you're not yeah, ready for that I, I conversation. That that could take you a whole other place right now. And I told you I've been drinking, so you might want to get that mic. <laughs> so, <laughs> but but let's, let's, let's explore though. Why do you believe that um, most white women marry up, and you know minorities, black women marry up? Because white women have been trained by their mothers to marry up. The man is supposed to take care of you. The man is the head of the household. Where a lot of times, a lot of our sisters have been told that black men ain't shit. You feel what I'm saying? I can do it for myself. I made it on my own. But you're not ready for that conversation. Get that mic off me because I've been drinking. Do you think that <laughs> that is why historically women always <laughs> All right, so we All heard, right. We hey, heard that contract. Right, there. right. Oh, is marrying up and marrying down simply based on finances or is it the totality of an individual? Hold on, before we even before we even go, let's go ahead and go right into the next one then. Since you asked okay. that question, let's All go right, to the next I, one. I, I, I put it out there. No, 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 I'm with you, I'm with you. Let's, let's hear it. Hello. Are having black women in particular, mm-hmm. when it becomes to becoming a wife? Keeping it 100? Yes. There's not enough eligible black males who fit the needs of black women. Mm. By the time you dissect the demographics of finances, sexual orientation, uh, what you end up drilling down into because black women tend to want to marry black men. Right, right. So black women are excelling. They're getting accelerated degrees, graduate degrees, doctorate degrees. They're starting businesses. Black women are running circles around men. Right. And it's also shown in research that women Mm -hmm. want to marry on their same level of financial and educational status. So if you're a black woman making $150,000 a year with a master's degree, you tend to want to marry a black man on that same level or higher. If black women are excelling at such an accelerated rate, Mm -hmm. how do men keep up with that? What do you think the challenge (laughs) is that women are having? Okay. Okay. There's more. 
No, that's it. That's Bruh. it. Hey, man. I, mean, listen, <laughs> I, 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 I know my, my views on that will be different from a lot of people. I Listen, I'm going to provide this context. I went to HBCU, mm-hmm. got kicked out, and then I went to a TWI. Mm-hmm. Two culturally different perspectives. Mm-hmm. Two, I'll be kicked out of both. <laughs> oh, I graduated go ahead, from man. one of them. But so, I mean, all, all black, all black campus. <laughs> it's like at, I went to PV, thirteen to one. Mm-hmm. It's more women than there are guys going to college. Mm-hmm. Da- dads fact. want their daughters to be educated, and so they're gonna do everything in their power to send them to school. And I was one of them asshole kids. I was like, yeah, drop off, dad. I, I'm gonna take care of her from here. Yep. Now, I, now I got a daughter. That's uh, beautiful. She's a, mm-hmm. And she's getting ready to go to college. And I'm like, yo. <laughs> My daughter just graduated <laughs> college. That shit was a scary Bruh. time. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and thinking about that women are becoming more educated because they've been afforded the opportunity to not have to worry about the same things that Trey has to worry about, the same things that Sean has to worry about, the same things that Chris has to worry about. They're now in a position where, yeah, you're not a threat. You're not perceived as a threat like Sean or Trey. Mm-hmm. Or Chris is. So we're going to give you more access. Now the fact that you got education. Okay, now we can kind of control this narrative based on what we can pay you. And it's going to make you ostracize yourself from certain sects of people, which is people that look like you. Right. Like she said, we want to marry black men, but it comes down to something that Trey had mentioned earlier. Are we showing up? Are we there? Are we present at all times and protecting and leading and and carrying on a family dynamic. Right. And, and I'm equating it to the business idea <laughs> right. of what we said earlier to right now. Man, I look that that just made me ask another question listening to the, both of those clips because you ask the question, who's the prize in the relationship? The man or the woman? Mm-hmm. And nine times out of ten, the woman is going to say the women. Right. But if you're dating up, mm-hmm. That means the man is the prize. Right. And you're right. trying to catch him, right? Exactly. So that means all these other women are seeing him as a prize too. Dog, if I was not married right now, I'd I'm I'd be if I got divorced right now, I'd be the most prized unrestricted free agent on the market. Talk about it. Because I bring too much. I have access to too much. The resources are not just financial. The resources are in relationships. Yep. Sean is moving to Atlanta. Trey is moving to Cali. I got access to both of y'all. Y'all go do something phenomenal. I got access to y'all. Right. I'm in Houston and I do something phenomenal. You got, you got access, access to me. Right. These resources are not just financial, but they can become financial. Natural. And yep. the way we look at success is if I can take care of it financially, I'm good. We but, believe in solving a lot of our problems with getting money. Yep. But think about this. The sad part is this. When they talk about um, women marrying, black women marrying down, white women marry up. Black men we always go get so we could be at a status financially. We always nine times out of 10, go get someone below us. We fix and, but, we, and we fix nev- but no one has never looked at that as a wrong thing. No one has never saw that as a bad thing, saw that as an issue or anything. When a black woman gets some money and she doesn't look down and say, you know, you know, this brother, not many of them, nine times out of 10, not many of them go and say, I know this brother doesn't have the finances, but he has all these other tangible things. I'm, I'm here. Let me, you know what I mean? I, I, I still, say, I still I treasure this person. I would right. say there's 20%. Yeah, it's some, it's some, yeah, it's some out there that do it. It's, it's, you, said, it's, you said 20, 20%? Yes. I say 20%. Yeah. So you gotta, out of you every, gotta, you gotta, you I'm, gotta be an amazing guy, man. I might go less than 20. I might go less than 20, but now, you well, know. I'll say out of every, out of every 10 women, two mm-hmm. of them that are in a financially okay. stable position are gonna okay. look and say, I, I'm okay. older, mm-hmm. I have a child or I have kids, and I love what this person brings and what they represent. And they create stability where I didn't have it for whatever right. reason. Right. Okay. And it's a yeah, different they, level of pressure, though. It's a different level of pressure. And, oh, oh, it is. Yes, it, it is. is. Mm-hmm. See, it, that's just an But think about that. that. Look at. But think about that. As a man, you say that's a different level of pressure. Women don't think in that manner. There ain't any pressure in that. You know what I'm no, saying? They think, they think. They think it's easy. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, yo, for them, it's like, it's yo, actually, I go. Actually, this this brother got a bunch of money. He come and get me. We move on up. I'm. I'm good. You know what I mean? I'm we good. we think about that shit like, God damn it, man, she got more money than me. 
She's going to start looking down on me if I don't start making some chicken, at least no, close society, to her. We start society looking teaches you, for shit. Society teaches you that's how it happens. But unfortunately, more often than not, that is how it happens, man. You know what I'm mm. saying? But you never know until you dive in. Right. Word. You know what I'm saying? I'm blessed to have met people that aren't of that negative nature, but I'm not naive to think that that isn't there. Right. Because some people will love you for what you are and then hate you for what you are. Right. You know what I'm saying? Have, the same thing they love you for after a while, they hate you for. Yeah. Because they actually expect you to change to be something else. Yeah. Well, and then a lot of times they see the potential in you and they expect you to have a certain fight, a certain drive, a certain level of aspiration. That's what they see in you. And when you don't have that, you become a disappointment. But what happens when you, you realize that potential? And it exceeds what they expected. And now some people don't changes. really want you to make it though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, see, I've talked about this before. I've never won a podcast, though. I don't I don't think. But a lot of people will get with you because they see that potential in you, but they really don't want you to realize that shit. But I, you don't know that's what you have. Like you in your mind, you don't think that's what you have. Because they want to keep using you. That's a that's, lot of friendships, a lot of friendships end because you made it. Yeah. They like you better with that's that crazy. struggling person. That's crazy. What, what, I look at it if you if you made it, that gives me access sense? to making it. Yep. What part? What part of your pie of life actually makes sense? Three hundred sixty degrees. What part of that actually makes sense? <laughs> and, uh, and you're right. No, you're right. But see the pro. The, the, and like you said, everybody wants to. A lot of people want to. If you here, you here. I want you to stay here with me. Well, as soon as you get here, motherfucker. First thing they say is, "Oh, you you think you better than me." <laughs> and I've that's had how, that happen a bunch of times. I've had that happen from women, women that I've been been with. You know what I'm saying? Shit, my dog, my ex wife, and not the shit on her, but it is what it is. Too? Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, oh, on, I'm on my second. I'm on my <laughs> second. I'm on my second. Though. Hey, right. But I ain't doing the third. If this don't work, I ain't doing this shit again. I'm out. I'm out the game. <laughs> Fuck that. But my ex wife, man, she, um, she, I was at a financial place where I was up, up. It was great. No issues, no problems. Everything was fine. But she found so many ways to tear it down because she didn't. She felt like I was getting too much light. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo, mom, this is something I've been working on before you. When you came into the picture, this is what I've been doing. Now that you're here, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Why is this an issue? Um, so I like a lot of times that's um I hate to say it. A lot of times we want to keep each other at this same level yeah. instead of seeing each other progress. I, but isn't, heard, the, isn't heard, that isn't the, isn't that the goal to find a companion where you have that balance, where you both are motivating uh, and pushing each other? That, that's that's, that's, that's hard. One, that's because y'all 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 in different seasons with one another, right? So you can she, be in different seasons and still want to elevate each other and and push each other throughout the grind. True, but sometimes even the person genuinely, you lay next genuinely to, though, genuinely though, yeah, genuinely. But sometimes genuinely. a person you lay next to doesn't believe in you the way you believe in them. That's true. But it still could be that, a little bit of a balance within that. They still don't have to hate the fact that you're progressing. I'm, I'm married to a former athlete. I'm a former athlete. And at times, one of us is going to have to back down because we both like this. And I'm like, I'm smarter than this. I know what's happening. I know I'm being triggered right now. So either I'm going to allow this button to be pushed or I'm going to understand what's happening in real time right. and de-escalate myself. So right. sometimes it's it can be confrontational because of the But there's power, there's, there's, there's power in strategically declining. And there's also a power in that silence. You don't have to take every issue and attack it. True. You, you, it, you it can become, win. You can... You know yourself, you can win sometimes by not saying nothing. But that sometimes creates an internal war within yourself. It's because pick, by you not, pick, by you not speaking your, on it. No, you have to pick your times when to do it. Certain things you can't hold in. We know that. Certain things can't. Certain <laughs> things got to be said. Certain right. things got to be done. Right. Yeah. Real certain talk. situations, certain situations, this ain't the one I'm declining. You're going to get this. Hey, You're going to get this work. <laughs> you get this work today. Today you get this work. You're going to get this and work that, today. And, and what I say, Sean? That uh -huh. sets the tone for the rest, the rest of the week. Of the rest of the week, yo. I mean, you got you gonna have a week, yo. That's that's part of the balance too. You hope to find a woman that doesn't extend that too long. Right, right. I mean, I know some situations. That's a where, level of maturity. 
I've been, I've been blessed. Like I said, you I've want to have, have that balance in that woman that right. don't have that. You got some women that will talk to their husband for two, three weeks. So I've been blessed. I've been blessed in that in that spectrum. My wife, we don't, we don't. Um, That's that balance. We don't, we don't hold it past the day. We don't hold it past the day. Um, we don't lead it. We don't lead the house mad. You know what I mean? And we don't go to bed. Man, like that's been some rules, but she's been raised by some old people, man. These old people, you know what I mean? Yes, her mother's in her life, but she's been raised by old people. And these old people did certain things, a certain balance. These old country folks from South Carolina. So they do. My so she she passed, she kind of she understands that we have we set the tone within our relationship early on. But but and at the same time, I'm headstrong and I also believe um certain certain um principles within our relationship and I believe, you know, and we build that construct. Like, it's certain things we don't do. We like you. No one would never really know if we doing bad. You know what I'm saying? Because that's between us. You know what they I mean? Should. We don't they argue should. in front of people. We don't even argue in front of our kids. We take that shit to the room. And if we mad at each other, you know, you do that silent treatment, walk past each other, shit. You know what I mean? Even with the boys around, it's certain shit that we just don't do, um, based on these principles that we created at the beginning stage of our relationship, because even my wife, she's been married before. She was in an abusive marriage where mm. dude, um, dude used to hit on her. You know what I'm saying? Now, um, and then she got with me and she was bringing some of that thought process with, within my relationship, you know, with our relationship. And then I came into a relationship where it was volatile verbally. Like I used to uh. cuss her monkey ass out because she was just off the chain sometimes. And she used to just do the most wildest shit and it just programmed me in a wrong way. So when we got together, we were bumping heads and then we realized we can't take what we had prior into this new space. You know what I mean? But like y'all both said, it's a level of maturity that you have to have to even have that discussion to understand that you're taking something from a previous situation and bringing it into this current new situation that can't, that can't yeah. work. You know what hey, I'm saying? Just, just a side note, did any one of y'all had therapy? <laughs> no. After y'all... Previous relationship? Nah, neither one of us. Neither one. Okay. Nah, neither that's one. that's the the result of that, and you know, losing my family. What inspired me to want to dig into therapy? Because as I took myself off of the alcohol, I mean, I I, I self did the self therapy thing. Okay. And after going through that, it put me through. I'm like, for one, if I can conquer this alcohol demon, you know, if I can conquer this obesity demon, you know, what I'm saying, I. I I want to be able to help other people. But the amount of time it took me to conquer it, yeah. it took, I mean, it took years. Well, it, it took as long it as it was, was supposed process. to take. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not knocking the process, but I'm saying I, if I can assist others within that process, I would want to genuinely do that and gain right. strength from that is what I'm saying. I did it on my own. I think yeah, it was so, meant for me to do that, but everybody yeah. can't do that. Nah, because what you did Man. was a self-detox. You know how hard it is? To do that, yeah, I did it. Mentally yeah. and physically, you. But know. I can't tell how hard it is for somebody else, though. Do you right. know what I'm saying? It might be impossible for the next person. I was getting up six a.m. going to the gym. You know what I'm saying? To get that weight off of me. You know, to get that. But it was more than just getting the weight off of me. I had to get my mind right. I had to realize just relieving yourself. My of biggest stress. problem. Yeah, I had to realize my biggest problem was my man in the mirror. You know I mean, my biggest issue was myself. Yeah. Once you start liking mean, the person you see in the mirror, man, you know it's time for a change. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. I'm, my eyes were getting puffy. You know what I'm saying? I was just aggravated all the time. Like the simplest shit would just make me be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" Like right. everybody aggravated me. Like I didn't like anybody. But Chris, what you even said about therapy? I've had therapy before. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, after the fact. Um, but you know, after those, after that relationship, you no, know, my wife, same thing. But we, um, we both had individual therapy sessions, okay. therapy moments, you know what I mean? Because I know for me, man, I got a lot of baggage, past baggage that you don't, sometimes you just need someone other than the person you know to speak to, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I'm not opposed to it. I used to be opposed to therapy. I, You know, from the black community, man, we ain't do that shit, man. They tell you, go, go, go see the God, go, go, go to church, yeah, see go God. To church. And that shit wasn't I was working. <laughs> I tried I was that, that shit just wasn't working for me. Cause I, I was really approach. I'm an overthinker. I go to church and I see nothing but the wrong within this place. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So but you can always find the wrong in everything, but a yep, lot of what exactly. we deal with is trauma from our childhood that's yeah. never oh, rectified or you never heal from, and it affects our adulthood yes. and it affects our relationships, even right. in personal and in business. I agree. And you know, it can hinder us because we get inside our own head 
You get in, once you get inside your own head, unless you're mentally strong enough to see past, past what's happening, you will chisel away at your social emotional being to the point where you whittle it down to where it's nothing. Yep. And now you yeah. have to be rebuilt. You have to rebuild yeah. that self esteem, rebuild yeah. that that motivates my motivation into it. And Did that's a that. lot of what I focus on. That trauma informed care, that cognitive behavioral therapy, man, it's a real thing. So you but have think to of it, the people, a lot of the people that suffer that, they go home to a woman that compounds it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you're struggling with these things. You got a toxic and then, relationship. And then we've talked before about how you really can't tell a woman everything. Sometimes you can go home and you can tell a woman you're going through some of these things, and they'll talk to you like you're a whole entire sucker. Oh, so you sucker. You don't put you don't put your heart on the table and she's looking at you like you bitch ass nigga, suck it up. Now that just made yeah. it worse. You know oh, what I'm saying? Man. Now you really closed in. And then what happens is, and I've been a victim of this, when you really do get in a relationship where you really love what you have, you're kind of tentative to bring these kind of things up. You're fighting through them, but you're kind of tentative in saying exactly what you're fighting through because in your mind, you're programmed to believe you can't talk to a woman about these certain things. Mm. But but what I just say, when you don't, the things that are unsaid sometimes creates an internal war within you. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. And, and so, yeah. And, and that, but then that's by the sound you bring part. it out, though, you ready to fight. That's it. So, that's it. So, it because, but because we grew up learning anger, we know aggression. We don't know the other emotional parts that make us up. We know aggression. We know anger. We know frustration. We know all of the negative side. But it's a whole different level to it once you see and get past that anger, that aggression, and that confrontational spirit about yourself. And I had to learn that. I, I I grew up realizing that my mom was always in abusive relationships. And I said, I remember the last time, uh, and it actually was my sister's dad. He was a big truck driving dude. He was about your size, Trey. And I said, uh, he he threw me one day, like like the hook through Thor, not Thor, uh, Loki. Loki. Yeah. Threw, him, threw my ass across the room because I was trying to stop him from beating on my mom. I said, when I get older, I'm going to get big, I'm going to get strong, and no one's ever going to do that. So what that did, that was the birth of a monster. And I didn't realize that. So how did you? How do you feed a monster? You become confrontational. You don't back down from anything. Ain't no sucker shit over here. You oh. look, hey, hey, dog, I like your kicks. What size you at? Uh, your response to that tray is going to be what? Yeah. I know my response. I'm like, Yo, nah, what's your, I'm, I'm what's your I'm response, I'm, I'm, swing, I'm swinging first. I ain't saying I'm shit. looking at you. I'm looking at you. That's my size. Yeah. Your size. I'm not doing all that. I'm, what's I'm swinging first. What yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't so, know what it is. You, you don't run away from confrontation. You run to confrontation. I'm, I'm or you're the it. instigator. Like, yeah. like, oh, I tell you, it's your size. What, what's, what, what's happening? Come what's get him. It's your size, so, homie. So <laughs> my, mom, my monster became... I had an outlet, and if I didn't have this outlet, I probably would either, I'd probably be fucked up right now. But I had this guy in the neighborhood named Uncle George. He was not a nonprofit. He was not a preacher. But he was like the go-to person for the football community. So he took me under his wing and made me a part of this Little League team. So I now got to channel all that aggression and all that anger that I couldn't take out on this big man, on these other kids that I can impose my physical uh, being on and I excelled at that and so I got rewarded for being hyper aggressive and physical mm -hmm. well how do you do how do you transition that when you get older you go to a school and they say hey man you're really good mm -hmm. you're really good you like to hit people you like pain is not an issue with you so you get rewarded you get accolades you become all city all state all whatever how do you get rewarded from that now you got schools want to give you scholarships to bring your monster to their program Mm -hmm. and take your monster to a new height. Well, the next height after that is becoming a pro. Now you got the ultimate reward for being a monster. Yeah. All that anger and frustration that, that, that pent up. Ray Lewis said it best. When I was in high school, my dad was an athlete as well. He had all these records. I never knew my dad and I hated him because he wasn't a part of my life. I wanted to destroy every record that he had. And that propelled him from middle school, high school, college to the pros. He's a 10-time pro bowler, two-time yeah. Super Bowl champ. And he based everything, that energy source came from the hatred and anger and frustration that he had from his childhood. Yep. 
So yeah. imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I, but, I, as a ther- I, I, but as a therapist, but as a therapist, think of the guy that doesn't make pro. You know what I'm saying? You still have all that aggression. You have exactly. nowhere to deliver it. You have nowhere to de- deliver that pain. You have nowhere to communicate that hurt in a structured setting because you're not a football player anymore. And you still have the right. same built up aggression that has been building up over these years. Oh, now you have to yeah. be a regular civilian. That yeah. is, that's going to channel somewhere else, man. But yo, I know, I know we could talk about this all day. Um, anybody got anything they want to promote as we get ready to end? Anything you want to do? You got anything? Man, Trey, you know you got I, something to say. Go ahead and do it, man. No, go ahead, man. You got <laughs> something going on, man. Yeah, look, Seamus plug. You know what I mean? I, I know this, this podcast is after Thanksgiving. If you haven't yet, Go back and check out. Um, uh, go check out my documentary. It's on on my network. It's um, got what you need. Um, TV G W U N TV Space TV on Roku. Um, and then I'm also um, in the talks with um, just having it on Amazon as well. Even though I do have an Amazon channel, I don't really like it, so I don't promote it. I'm putting. I'll just put this on Amazon. Amazon. I'm talking with someone now, but it's called What It Means to Be a Black Father. Um, I got together about uh, five men that I know personally and um, just document their thoughts on a couple of questions I had to ask uh, on um, being a black father in today's um, climate. Also check out Exposed, hosted by my guy Leon. Um, it is a music video show, man. Um, the, right now, the um, the hype for it has been pretty, pretty good and the promotion hasn't even really kicked all the way in. So you're going to start seeing billboards go up in your area in your area very soon. So um, check out Exposed on the same thing, GWN Space TV. And you can check out the Black Mail Podcast. You know, we always here every week. We on YouTube and we on the Roku channel and we on Spotify, Apple Music, Apple um, Podcasts, everything of that nature, man. I got a few other things going on. I can't when really I, break when I, when I do the um Yeah, when I do the clips, I'm going to take that. And I'm going to put that up. Um, oh, my God. Dub, you, you, you're going to go last because you're the guest, man. So relax over there. Um, <laughs> if you ever hear me speak about K-Dub, that's my mentor as far as therapy. That's him right there. So um, yeah, basically for myself, I'm going I'm to put everything for the new year. Um, I've been working in my head on, on a podcast we're doing with myself, dealing with you know therapy type sessions. I've been practicing in my head. I haven't brought it up to my brother yet until I get that. That's going to be called Talk To Him. Um, I have my book on accountability and self-reflection called Not Me. Um, my music, the Soul Trade Project, that project's going to come out next year. I got a show coming up. It'll be done by the time this comes out with my man Elias Soul. We got a live band. We're going to have the video. It's, it's, it's going to be fire. It's going to be fire. And um, that'll be my first time performing, doing that. So that's going to be dope. Um, as far as therapy, hopefully next year, by the time I'm in Cali, I'm going to start taking clients and banging that out and getting that done. I got an article coming out with Canvas Rebel Magazine. I haven't told my man yet. Did that. Um, that should be out within another week or so. I'm, I'm and, gonna quit um, being your manager, bro. I'm just I'm gonna <laughs> fire myself. You full of shit. <laughs> this thing go from telling me everything to telling me nothing. No, listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't tell you that one because you'd have been like, "Oh man, did you do a photo shoot for that?" And I'm like, "Bro, I ain't got time right now." I'm just gonna all right, but that, that you want to tell. <laughs> You hear what he said? He said, you hear what he said? Because I want to do a photo shoot. This is something to help him. You know what I mean? Nah, nah. The, the time, it was, a, it was a rough period. It was during the period where we felt Okay. Ready. I understand. I understand, brother. I understand. And I answered. I'm going to tell you how crazy it was. I'm going to let you go, Doug. I answered no, all of the questions at work. Oh, yeah. That's how I didn't have the time to answer them. This is what I was doing the two joints. I was on my phone answering these long-ass answers. <laughs> Try to be articulate. Then they sent me the uh, transcript of it, and uh, it'll be dope. I think I like. I basically only spoke about therapy and right. the certifications I'm getting. All of that I based it on that. So that's what all right. I'm all right. All right. All right. All right. All right, Chris. What you got, <laughs> my brother? Oh man, I just want to uh, welcome uh, everyone to check out the website, uh, the Launchpad dot life. Uh, if you have any needs regarding counseling or you need therapy or you need even a wellness recovery action plan put together, please come check us out at thelaunchpad.life. That's the launchpad.life. Uh, I'll have com. that here. I'll have that no, in the, in the, on the no actual doubt. screen too. And, no, and no. just on the side note, as, as you know, like I said before, I'm not just a therapist. I'm also a creative. So I have a new show that's coming out. Uh, 
Uh, we're working on some things right now to see if it's going to get picked up by a major network, but it's called Goodwill Hunting, and it's not, not the movie, it's the show, and it's no. based around bargain hunting at certain Goodwills around the United States. That's and I'm going across the United States, and there I found go. a lot of things. If you ever get a chance to come to my facility in uh, Houston, Texas, everything that you see is outfitted from things that I purchased at Goodwill. And sometimes I'm coming I out flip them. I I'm already. Out there next year. All right, yeah, you, yeah. Next you, year is two months out away. There. Yeah. We got people out there. We got people out there living out there. No doubt. No there. doubt. So uh, mm -hmm. if you guys see me, man, you're going to see me incorporating those things that I buy into photo shoots that I do or video productions that I do. I got a couple of documentaries that's, that's coming out. And uh, I'm excited about what's happening in 2023 because I got oh, a yeah, number of too. books that's coming out as well. Uh, based around addiction and mental, mental and behavioral health, addiction and uh, a lot of things that's uh, affecting our community at, at large. So I'm wishing all the success to you brothers and making sure that uh, I put that out there because I got love for you all and everything that you, you're working towards. So I want everything to be as successful as you can handle it. I appreciate it, man. We thank you, bro. We really, really do, man. It's good having you on, man, because you, you definitely bring a great... Um, a great dynamic to the conversation. That's something that him and I are planning to do, start bringing on more guests and, you know, right. having conversations with people that, you know, expand some of these topics that we discuss, discuss about, that we discuss on. So this is, uh once again, I'm Tall Sean. T.S. is who I am. Trey Dad is who I am. And then we got my guy. I'm Chris White. You know what I'm saying? Cuz University, baby. Teach something, learn something. We all win. Wear it up, man. This is episode 86 of the Black Male Podcast, and we out. <laughs> Already.